بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد so i wanted to read a hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to emphasize something incredibly important for us as muslims the muslim brotherhood and by muslim brotherhood i'm meaning the akhwa akhwa al islamiyah and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the quran inma mu'minun ikhwa Verily, the believers are brothers. So brothers, how do they interact with one another? Do they attack one another's honor? Do they disgrace and belittle one another? Do they carry information and backbite and ghiba and namima for one another? Of course not. Everyone knows this from the disbelievers to the believers that these are not befitting characteristics of the believer and these are not a part of akhwa. This does not make brotherhood. And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in an authentic hadith let us know that ghiba and namima is one of the reasons people are punished in the graves. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam marra nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ala qabrain فقال انهما ليعذبان وما يعذبان في كبير اما احدهما فكان لا يستتر من البو واما الاخر فكان يمشي بالنميمة so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was walking by some graves and he said to his companions رضي الله تعالى عنهم اجمعين he said verily those two they are being punished and they're being punished for something which is not considered great as for one of them, he used to not cleanse himself uh, properly when he was uh, after urinating a karamakum Allah. And as for the other one, he used to carry the tails with the purpose of spreading facade, uh, spreading evil. So the Prophet ﷺ let us know that what those two major sins, letting us know that ghiba is a major sin, and that these things are reasons people are punished in the graves. But let's look at the hadith at hand. Call on uh, Abi Hamzata, Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, an a nabiyyi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal, la yu'minu ahadakum hatta yuhibba li akhihi ma yuhibba li nafsi. Ruahu Bukhari wa Muslim. In this hadith, the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, who said that it was narrated on the uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said that one of you does not believe until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. And this was narrated in Bukhari and Muslim. So here in this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, La yu'minu, that this person does not believe. The ulama of Islam, they let us know that this right here, this negates Kamal Iman. Kamal Iman, what do we mean by this? We mean that this negates, this doesn't totally negate a person's Iman, meaning that they're a disbeliever, as the Khawarij and the Takfiris would have you believe. But rather, this negates the fullness or completeness of a person's belief. A person's Iman is naqs. And this is why our Shaykh, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he mentioned in his treaties regarding that a person from Ahl Sunnah, that sometimes they may know Minhaj, they may know Aqidah, but they have naqs in their Iman. Not that they don't have Iman, not that they're no longer from Ahl Sunnah. So you'll find people from Ahl Sunnah who are from following the Minhaj Salaf Saleh, the Minhaj Sabil al Mu'mineen. You'll find them, but they'll have weakness in their, some naqs in their Iman. Why? Because their manners are disgraceful or despicable, or they belittle other people and they. Uh, are not uh, befitting in their conduct and character, but still be from Ahl Sunnah. So that's a fa'id that we gain. But let's go back to the hadith. Is this hadith, some of the fa'id of this hadith, just to keep it brief, one of the fa'id of this hadith is that it shows us and illustrates for us that Iman fluctuates, that Iman is sometimes uh, a person can have strong Iman and a person can also have weak Iman. This is the belief of Ahl Sunnah. And this contradicts the belief of who? The Murjiyah. Those people who say Iman is constant. And some examples that we have to be careful with in this time is we have some of our brothers and sisters, they're involved in all kinds of sins. For example, sometimes you'll find sisters, they don't wear hijab. 
You'll find brothers, they smoke weed and they drink alcohol. And then with that, they say, you don't know my heart, brother. You don't know what's in my heart. Nam, you're correct. We don't know what's in your heart. But what we see, Ahl Sunnah, Yahkum al Zahir. Ahl Sunnah, they look to the Zahir. And it shows us that that person has weak Iman. So that person is not a disbeliever for not wearing hijab. But yet, they should not negate the fact that their sinfulness is taking from their Iman. It is weakening them. And so this illustrates for us that Iman fluctuates. Sometimes we're strong, sometimes we're weak. Some people have weak Iman, some people have strong Iman. This hadith also, as we already mentioned, is a rad ala murjia and the khawarij. And we've already mentioned how. Because the murjia, they say Iman is constant and that it doesn't fluctuate and that your deeds are not a part of your Iman. But Ahl Sunnah says, no, Iman is of three. Iman, Qawla Lisan, it's, it's the statement of the tongue. So when we pronounce the Shahada, that's part of Iman. It is Amal Jawara, it's part of your deeds, the actions that you do, and that's a refutation of the Murjia. And then also, uh, it is an issue of the heart, and as the Prophet Wasallam said, Allah wa hiya qalb, when he was talking about that part in the body, which if it becomes facet or if it becomes uh, if it becomes tainted, then it is uh, it affects the whole body. And he was talking about the heart. So it shows us that Iman is also a part of the heart. And also the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri also illustrates that for us. And this is also a refutation of the Khawarij as we mentioned because they make takfir of the major sinners. But Ahl Sunnah says no. That those people are still, they're sinful, but they're still believers. They're still believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This hadith also illustrates for us that Iman, it uh, increases with obedience to Allah and it decreases with sins, with ma'asi, with ma'asiyah. This hadith also illustrates for us, this is a very important issue here, Adam al-Isma al-Insan, that people are not perfect. And why I want to mention this, because we have some individuals, they believe their ulama are perfect. They believe that the talib al-alam so-and-so is perfect. They believe their marid is perfect. They believe their, uh, the person who they believe is from the awliya is perfect. La. This is for the Prophet wasallam, as the statement of Imam Malik bears witness to this, that no one, everyone's statement can be uh, refuted except sahib hadha qab. And he, was and he pointed to the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. So we know, as the Prophet ﷺ said, Kulu ibn Adam khata wa khayran khata'ina tawabun. That every person, uh, all the children of Adam, that they make mistakes. And the best of those is those who, um, those who make toba. So we can always make toba from our sins. And we have to know that no one is free from mistakes. So we don't blind follow anyone in their statements, especially if it contradicts Kitab Allah wa Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. Another benefit that uh, the Shaykh mentioned here is that this hadith also illustrates for us Mujahid to Nafs that we should strive to purify our souls uh, and fight against the evil that lays within us and the Shayateen who try to influence us from the jinn and the men. Also, this hadith illustrates for us the Ahimiyat al Iman, the importance of our Iman and striving to. Uh, perfect our Iman and improve our Iman by doing things like reading the Quran and by going back to the Nas is going and by uh, having that Akhua to the Imaniya, you know, having that brotherhood that Islam illustrates and has for us, uh, that Islam dictates for us that we should have the brotherhood. As we said before, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al Karim, in al Mu'minun Ikhwa, that the believers are brothers to one another. So you help your brothers. Help your brothers by advising them, by wanting good for them, and sharing with them, bi'idnillah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another benefit of this hadith is this hadith shows us that iman kamal, that full iman, is that iman which is based on loving good, muhabbat khair by loving khair for those people for other than yourself mahabbat al khair li ghair it is loving good for others so if you love good for your brother that you have no other relationship for it's not because of his color it's not because of his tribe it's not because of his nationality it's not because of this but you want good for him or her for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're willing to aid them in that khair 
loving khair for them for the sake of Allah, then this shows uh, that you have a strong iman. This is an indication of kimal, of kimal iman. This is the signs of kimal iman, of perfect iman or uh, good iman. And a last benefit I want to mention regarding this hadith is it shows us the importance of ta'awun ala bitter wa taqwa, of, of, of helping one another in goodness and righteousness. And this is the state of the believers, that we don't spend time tearing down things, but we spend time building things and ta'awun and having, uh, coming together in righteousness. Because sometimes you have certain brothers, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us in them and guide us in them, I mean, that they spend all of their time trying to tear down people and tear down what the people have done. Oh, mashallah, they built a new program in the masjid. Well, let's see if we can talk about it. Is the imam on the sunnah? Is the imam this? Is the imam this? I saw the imam doing this. Instead of building and contributing to the khair, that they're b- breaking down the people and adding to the shar. This doesn't mean we don't run ahl bid'ah and we don't run a mistake. No. But this means that we should look to building one another and building each other instead of tearing down. And I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad.